You ready to do this? Yeah. I am, man. I love doing these things. <laughs> I just, uh, I like recording, but I haven't been on too many of other shows. Quite frankly, it's kind of weird, but hey, I appreciate the invite. Howdy, hey, welcome to the Disney Hack Podcast, where we discuss tricks and tips for your Disney trips. I'm joined today by some folks from the Disney podcasting community who have recently become good friends of mine. I first met Trent on Facebook, where we uh, engaged in a few conversations and decided to send each other friend requests. And I recently had a chance to have a conversation with him and his wife, Jenny, on their podcast, the Disney DNA Podcast. And I wanted to welcome them on the Disney Hack, because being avid Disney Walt Disney World travel goers, uh, you know, uh, they have their own ways of hacking their way through Disney to optimize the magic and save a little money and a little bit of time. And I wanted to tap into that resource and see what kind of great ideas they had that they could share with y'all. So Trent and Jenny, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having us. We are happy to be here. Hey, thanks for having us. I'm a big fan of your show. I really love the Disney DNA podcast. I love that you guys open it with the morning show. It, uh, that's such a great piece of music that, you know, really gets me excited. And uh, and you guys always have wonderful guests on. I especially love it when you have your daughters on the show. Uh, they're just so much fun. They're just adorable to listen to. I love it when you get their perspective. As you know, I have a daughter that's around the same age and I like getting her point of view on things, movies that we've seen, uh, definitely trips to the parks. And so uh, keep doing that. I really enjoy listening to that. And how much fun will it be in about five or six years when our kids are in their late teens and we're able to go back and listen to when they were so sweet and innocent? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, you know, for us, you you kind of have talked about that that little song is that's basically how we started this podcast was was just the song that was first you know um i i wrapped the whole project around the opening of magic kingdom that was the that was the song interesting tell me how that came to be cuz how do you wrap a podcast around a song what's the story behind that well up until recently that has been my favorite opening ever for our trips we have to go catch that morning show because that helps gets us in that disney spirit and and for the four of us we absolutely love that show so at home i have tons and tons of disney music files from vinyl to digital to cds and i came across this that well that track on one of my cds and i said we're gonna take this song and i'm gonna chop it up into about three different sections because it's a pretty long song so we use it for the intro and then we there's a segment break and then at the end of our show we play that as our outro and that's kind of how the disney dna podcast got started was it was all started from a song that i love <laughs> that's awesome and, and i have seen the show for years i mean going since i was eight years old i've always enjoyed that i love trains and seeing seeing casey jr come down the track and the characters hop off and they're singing and dancing and and, and then you have mickey and sometimes you have like the mayor or the fire chief you got the countdown and then they count you in but now it's gone. So I'm a little bummed because we have a new show. But you know what? I'm still going to love this song forever because it's it is embedded in to all of my past trips, and I will always cherish that opening show. And I hope it comes back one day, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, you could say it's embedded into your DNA. That yeah, is correct. <laughs> and that's Very another good. story on how we came up with the name, actually. And that wasn't me. That was actually my co-host uh, slash wife, Jenny. She came up with the name. Yeah. Um, I kept asking Trent, like, what exactly do you want this show to be about? You know, do you want it to be like a, a travel show? Do you want it to be about the parks exclusively? Do you want it to be about the movies? Do you want it be, to be an adult oriented show or do you want it to be a family show and he said well we definitely want it to be a family show so that the kids can do it with us 
And I said, okay. So from there, I started, you know, Disney family podcast, family this, family that. And then I was on Pinterest one day looking up some medical stuff and DNA came up. And I'm like, hey, what about the Disney DNA podcast? So that's how the actual name name came to be. Yeah. And it was pretty easy. And I don't know, it just, it works, you know, and we wanted to be kind of like a, like she says, that Disney DNA family, because there's not that many that I'm aware of podcasts that are in the Disney community that have their family with them doing it. So we have two daughters, Brooklyn and Sophia. And when they come on, they are incredible. They have such a passion and such that love for Disney. And you can tell when they talk because they just, they, they're so excited. And especially when it comes to the content of our shows, they just get really, really motivated and really want to express that love for Disney because when we first started, they were shy. They did not want to come out of their shell, but here we are a year and a half into the show and they just have a ball and it's so fun. Yeah, they're really great. They're natural. And what I love about kids at that age, particularly, is that they just have, um, the you know, they don't have the filters. They don't have, you know, they, they, they certainly are going to just tell you how it is, what they think. They're going to be completely honest. And they are 100%, you know, transparent and honest. I think you guys had an episode about... Oh, I think it was Guardians of the Galaxy, and I had just gone to see it, and <laughs> you guys had posted on Facebook about what did you think, and I think I gave it a 3.5, and you mentioned it on the, on the show, and the girl's like, what does that guy know? He doesn't know anything. About <laughs> <laughs> did he not see the movie? It was clearly a five. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, and that's what's fun, is especially Sophia. She is a lot like her dad, me, because yeah, no I filter. no filter. I'm, I'm, I'm very honest, and... That gets me in trouble, right, Jimmy? Yeah. They, <laughs> they both need to learn this little word called tact. <laughs> See, whereas Brooklyn and Sophia, even when we're being mean, we do it tactfully so people don't realize you're actually being mean. Yeah, but it's all in due fun. Yeah. So, I mean, but, but yeah, we enjoy doing it as a family, and we want it to be one of those shows that you can be safe to bring your family into the room and – listen to our yeah. shows and there's we, nothing that's going to be bad. It's, it's family clean. And that's what yeah. the whole purpose was. And even when we talk like about behind the scenes type things about the characters and things like that, we keep it to where we won't spoil any magic for the little ones who think that these are really the characters. Correct. The things like that, that we try to keep very family oriented. Exactly. Wait, what do you mean? They're, they're not the characters? What? They are the characters. <laughs> oh, Jenny, you done messed up already no, right I, here. that's what I'm saying. Like the kids, she could say that on my show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they are the characters. <laughs> now, awesome. do you, on a tangent, do you want to hear a funny story about characters? <laughs> Absolutely. Hopefully no one's listening with kids. So our kids used I'm to nervous. be terrified of characters. Like we would even go to the mall and the Chick-fil-A cow would be out and we would literally have to walk on the other side of the mall to avoid the Chick-fil-A cow. They were that terrified of characters. (laughs) So when we're like, yeah, we're going to Disney World and there's characters, we had to explain to them that the, it wasn't, you know, these were just people in costumes. Um, we had an instance, <laughs> I want to tell you about Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> oh my, here we go. That, oh. that dreaded Chuck E. Cheese story. Okay, so <laughs> we used to go to Chuck E. Cheese, a, not a whole, whole lot, but like every other week for a mom's group, we would go to Chuck E. Cheese and the girls knew Sophia was about a year and a half old. So Brooklyn was like three and a half and the girls recognized at this point, the people who worked there and everything. Um, one day we were getting ready to leave and one of the employees came out as Chuck E. Cheese, which Mm -hmm. scared Sophia who bolted towards the door. (laughs) Well, the cat, the 
employee. <laughs> the cast member. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. the cast yeah. member. Not there, Jenny. Wrong knowing part. <laughs> Sophia went to go and get her because I was still getting everything together. Oh. And then all of a sudden, you hear Brooklyn scream, Chuck E. Cheese is trying to steal <laughs> Sophia. And she starts freaking out. Sophia starts freaking out. The employee quickly went and got out of the costume and came out so that the girls would calm down and everything. But I'm telling you, for a good probably two two and a half years i'm talking years after that every time we took the exit that chuck e cheese was at they would freak out they would yeah. start crying in the car <laughs> or if they were being bad i would be like oh you know where we're going if we're going to chuck e cheese and they would totally freak out so yeah. when Classic. we started playing in the <laughs> disney trip you know we did a lot of these these aren't real, you know. They got to do a little yeah. damage control. That's yes, right. That's right. yes, because they were like <laughs> that Chuck E. Cheese thing. They're scarred. We've only been back to Chuck E. Cheese once since that's happened. Yeah. And they're yeah. eight and ten now. Yeah, but it's all in due fun, you know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so the dreaded Chuck E. Cheese. Hey, since we're on tangents, <laughs> <laughs> my very first job, I worked at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> oh, nice. Did nice. you ever have to dress up? That was my primary job. That's all. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. I interviewed when I when I applied, I, I put costume character on the application. And during the interview, they're like, yeah, you're like three inches too tall. They're like, But if you want a job, we're hiring in the kitchen. So I went to work in the kitchen for six weeks. And one day I went into work. I wasn't on the schedule. Like I wasn't even on, like my name wasn't even on the schedule. My boss was like, don't worry about it. Just come back next week. I came back the next week and my name had been moved under the costume characters. And I spent the next 18 months working as Chuck E. Cheese on a daily basis. But yeah, it was, <laughs> wow. I got some stories. <laughs> yeah, oh, I bet. I well, bet. Our story actually makes pretty good now with your story. So hey, you know. <laughs> That's too funny. That's well, too I just funny. want to say one thing too. If your listeners are, Trying to figure out where we're from. We are actually from Louisiana, hence the Cajun or the uh, Southern accent. So we apologize if you if we sound a little bit different than than his normal guest because we do have a little Southern charm with us. I don't hear it. I yeah. don't think we have an accent. I think everyone else has an accent. So yes, we are near Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where we are based out of. Yeah, no, you guys sound great. And I, there's no normal on the Disney hack, so <laughs> <laughs> you guys fit right in. <laughs> Perfect. I just, I just got off a call with uh, Kurt Stone from uh, Geeking on WDW, and mm -hmm. he's up in Connecticut. So he's got that Northeasterner thing. So we're balancing it out from every every which way possible. I got the Yankees. I got the Southerners. So we're That's doing right. <laughs> I love it. So you told me about how you discovered the name for the podcast and how you structured it around that amazing song, which you fit into your show so well, but you haven't told me how you fell in love with Walt Disney world in the first place, because there had to be a point where you were just so driven to tell people what you did there and what they could do there and talk to people who have been there and, and, and spend money and time and resources in recording this stuff on an, an audio track and building a website and putting it out on iTunes. So tell me how you fell in love with Walt Disney World. Okay, I'll go first. So it started for me at a very young age. I was eight years old. I had some great neighbors who, who had been before I went, and they had kind of talked about some of their experiences, but they also have the movies. And back then, I'm talking like, old VHS tapes and before that we had some like real to real and watching some of those movies and I was like you know what I want to go experience this and then lo and behold out the blue my parents said hey let's go to Disney World one summer and this is back when it was just Magic Kingdom and Epcot there was a no Animal Kingdom no Hollywood Studios or there was no Blizzard Beach. There was just Typhoon Lagoon. <laughs> so it, just, it was very small. So, But I didn't get a chance to go to Typhoon Lagoon. Then It was only the two parks. So after walking in to the gates underneath the train station at Magic Kingdom and walking down Main Street, that is when it clicked. You know, I truly fell in love with the whole park the i mean from the architectural to the vision i absolutely 
love walking down Main Street, and I love going to the Emporium, my favorite place to shop. And every time we go, we have to go there, and I just I enjoy it. But to get back to the story is my neighbors were very nice enough to kind of instill and show me what the things were. And it started with me with, with the movies watching like my favorite is like Peter Pan, Robin Hood, Snow White, and, and just seeing those and then going to see the characters and experiencing all of that was just truly incredible. And I really enjoyed riding the attractions with my parents and for those who don't know small tangent they're coming with us on our trip this year and my parents haven't been since our second trip when i was 10. so we're about 30 years and they haven't been so for me this trip is going to be very emotional and very fun because i've been waiting for a very long time for this to happen i've got photos of us photos of us at my parents house of us riding like space mountain and big thunder mountain and all those things you know and to redo this with them now is going to be to me truly incredible and i'm i cannot wait for november to come because every day it's just like come on because i'm ready to experience it with them because they know when we come visit them every sunday because my mom always cooks or whatever and we go visit they hear us and our passion for Disney and you can tell that they are excited because we hype this thing up because we all enjoy going for the same reasons. It's about those experiences and those memories that we make with our families. And that's what Walt's vision was when he created these parks. He wanted us to be happy and to have those experiences and truly what I call experiences of a lifetime that are hard to get elsewhere you know and i have this passion for disney because of going and being very fortunate to go at a young age some people only get to go once in their life i've been many times you know and that's just because i'm lucky you know i'm um, i'm fortunate to 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 take my family which is the four of us and we go once a year and it's typically during Thanksgiving because we love the holiday season because the parks they transform they truly come to life in that holiday spirit I love Christmas Jenny loves Christmas so does the girls and to see the trees the decorations are truly incredible and I just love it and I've been a lifetime fan and will always be and have to thank my neighbors at a very young age. Thank you, Donna and Vicki. I don't know if you listen, but you are my inspiration for being a very passionate person about Disney and Walt Disney World. So, Jenny, tell us about your experience. Well, uh, mine is not as grand as that. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I went to Disney was on our honeymoon, and I did not do any of the planning or anything like that. Trent said, hey, where do you want to go on our honeymoon? And I said, I don't care. I'm not paying for it. Um, <laughs> and him and his dad planned everything and did everything. And then we had kids, and life happened, and we didn't come for years back. Like, I, I watched... Um, I didn't, I don't, we didn't really have cable growing up until I was like a teenager and out of the Disney channel and stuff, but I would watch it at my cousin's house. So I knew all the characters. I've seen all the movies and all that. But we had a good time on our honeymoon. It wasn't until really we started planning our 2014 trip with the girls that it was like, uh, if I'm paying all of this money, we are doing and seeing everything. So I was just really, really jumped into the planning of the trip. I listened to lots of different planning podcasts and I had different sites that I would read and there's people that I would kind of Facebook stalk what they were posting and everything. <laughs> so I really got into it then on the planning aspect of it. And then when our 2014 trip turned out so well, it like, it really cemented the um i love disney and the characters and the movies and all that but i really love the planning and talking about the planning and stuff like that 
Awesome. You know, I, there are so many people that are in the same boat that they're going to spend three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars to go for a week, week and a half to Florida. They're going to want to learn everything they can, which is why we do what we do to try and help illuminate some of these resources that are available for people to, you know, learn all they can so they can take the, the advantage of what's available for the amount of money that they're spending on their family. Plus, as you said, Trent, there's just the experience is pretty much second to none. There's nowhere else you're going to go or you can have this kind of a magical life-changing experience. And it might be the only time you do it in your whole life. So you want to make the most of it. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to pivot into talking about how the Caluet family plans for their trip to Disney World. And I know you guys have a trip coming up in November. You're going to, you're taking your folks with you, Trent. So there's a larger group than normally in the past. So you might be doing some things different than you might've done in terms of planning in the past. Plus you've got grandparents, you've got grandkids, you've got all these different variables thrown in. So I'm excited to learn what you guys are doing to plan for this trip. And I know you got some notes. So why don't we go ahead and get started with wherever you want to start from? Okay. Well, I'll get started. Um, not with our trip, but with our first trip, how we picked the time period was uh, there are a few sites that have these really great cal crowd calendars. So you could pick, you know, the less busy time of the year or say like for us who goes during Thanksgiving, you can look at these crowd calendars and figure out the, the least busy parks that day and things like that. So we picked our time frame to be Thanksgiving and we have just always gone back. We uh, are pretty much surrounded by hot weather all the time and <laughs> yeah. we don't want to go on vacation to hot weather unless it's the beach uh so like gulf shores yeah we love love gulf shores <laughs> i'm going in august you anyway, see? <laughs> um so we go during thanksgiving break and you can book i think it's like 450 days in advance or something like that Correct. so i know that I can book in August for next Thanksgiving's trip. Yeah. A whole, a great tip. A I, whole year in advance. It's, like, you know, it's like what, a year and a half. No. Yeah, definitely. A year and two months or something. Anyway, but we book for in August for the next Thanksgiving. And here's the, here's the great thing. You can book more than one trip option. <clears throat> Excuse me. So last year, uh, my best friend was going to come with us and ended up not being able to come, but we had two trips booked. We had one booked for the four of us, and then we had a separate reservation for the five of us mm. so that in case something happened and she couldn't come, we still had the one reservation. We made ADRs for both of them. Um, by the time we did fast passes, we knew for sure she wasn't going to be able to come. So we canceled it. You can cancel within 30 or 60 days. I think it's 30 without yeah. penalty or anything like that. So if you do have a couple different uh, variables in there, I do recommend booking more than one trip. It's only a $200 deposit. You get it back if you cancel it. It worked out really, really well for us. Well, the one reason that we do it so far in advance is just like she said, was you put down your $200 deposit. We're that old school family. We like to save cash or money. So we take that balance minus that, that $200 and then we divide it by the months up until it's, it's actually due and we treat it like a bill. So we put that money aside every single month and there's months where she might get a bonus or two or I might get something like that. And we, and that's extra that goes in that helps that balance get even smaller quicker. Yeah. Like this year we've mentioned we're going with my in-laws and they actually have their reservation and we have our reservation and we've already called the resort and we have asked to specifically have a joining room if we can because they'll put all the notes in there. Um, our first original, let me go back. We're staying at Coronado Springs yep. and we were just going to stay in a standard room. Well, Trent's dad just had double knee replacement and he wanted to stay in a preferred. Mm -hmm. So when we booked their reservation, More money. we changed the <laughs> reservation on ours, explained the situation and asked for adjoining rooms 
and specifically rooms that were closer to the front. And she said, okay, we'll note about the knees and everything like that. So if you do have some sort of situation like that, it doesn't hurt to call Disney, speak to them about your reservation, see what can be made um, possible. Our trips, this one's a little more expensive because of the uh, preferred rooms. Yeah, yeah. But our trips, we generally stay at moderates. Uh, that's our favorite. We stayed at the value last year. Uh, Art, of, Art animation of animation was great. The beds were <laughs> doubles. Doubles. So Trent had to Terrible. sleep with the kid, and I had to sleep with the kid. And then we were in the Little Mermaid, which is like a million miles away from the front. <laughs> So it they is. they are great for certain situations, but they didn't really work for our family. So we generally stay in moderates. Port Orleans is our favorite. Feels like home, away from home. We generally have the memory maker, and we've usually gotten the hopper pass, which I didn't think we were going to use this year, but the way it worked out, we're going to be hopping almost every day. Our reservations... And we go for eight nights, seven days, yep. are usually around $3,500. Mm -hmm. To get into um, something I'm going to talk about a little later, so that's usually $3,500. We plan $1,000 for dining because we don't do the dining plan. And then we spend or plan $1,000 for souvenirs or anything extra so our trips are usually about fifty five hundred dollars let me chime in here and say the we've weighed out options between cash versus the dining plan our family it does not work for us yeah. doesn't mean it won't work for you it doesn't work for us it's cheaper for us to do cash yeah and for the families who are going man fifty five hundred dollars is a lot of money I just, I don't know how I can come up with that. But like Trent says, if you divide it into 10 months, it's only $500 a month or, right. or whatever. It's and more manageable. Even, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I get paid weekly. So we break that down weekly and I say, oh, I only have to, you know, a hundred bucks out of the check a week. That's two or three times eaten out. We can skip that in a week. Yes. So if you break it down like <laughs> that, me. it does make it much more manageable for the overall pitchers. Yeah. And and that's the that's the nice thing is Disney makes things so simple to like save for everything, you know. I mean, all you need is that two hundred dollar deposit. And for us, like I said, we're old school. Now I've heard of people on social media, they buy the gift cards and they got that little hack on that and, and that's cool. But we're old school. We do the yeah, savings yeah. and everything. We put all our money up in savings and then when it's time to pay that final like ours is due in October, we're yeah. gonna roll that money in, pay off Disney, and we're good. Yeah. You know, we just bring yeah. our money to spend on our trip. Yeah, and another thing, like with us, if you stay at a value, it's going to be cheaper. If you don't get Memory Maker, it's going to be cheaper. And remember, the PhotoPass photographers will take pictures with your cameras. Exactly. So if you're on a budget, you might not want Memory Maker. And the Hopper Pass, you know, a lot of times it doesn't even work where we use the Hopper. 2014, we bought the Hopper Pass. We used it once because my father-in-law kept saying the hopper pass is a waste of money. Hmm. We literally did not use it. And then one night I said, we better hop parks just so your dad is not like I told you so. <laughs> so, I mean, the hopper pass, if you take that out. So, I mean, you could save a good thousand dollars by doing things differently. But check this out, though. Speaking of saving a little bit of money, Look at Pop Century right now. Just recently, they have gone through a renovation, and they're getting rid of those double beds finally, and they're putting the queens, and they got the Murphy style beds I that come down. I love this. And I'm, and this might sway us to actually maybe try this on our next trip. It might not be next year because we're we're talking about going to Disneyland possibly, but the next time we yeah. go, because yeah. she's all about saving money. Well, no, Trent's I love all about this spending idea. the money. 
I love this idea. <laughs> Just on a small tangent of the value resorts, I love the idea of having a queen bed and a Murphy bed because when you're not sleeping, you can fold that Murphy bed up and look at all of the room you have. Right, because they're they're taking that page from the art of animation yeah. suites because they use the same thing. Yeah. They do that on the cruise ships too. Very cool. Yeah. Because, you know, space on a cruise ship is really critical, so they're going to try to maximize that as mm -hmm. much as they can. Yeah. yeah. Those cabins are real small. <laughs> I, I hope they redo all of the value resorts with the queen and the Murphy bed. Because if you think about it, the value resorts are family-friendly. You got the queen bed for the parents. You got the Murphy bed for the kids. Yeah. And then Definitely. you can just pop it up in the morning and have more space. Like, I love this idea. Because for us, we are the ones that rope drop to just about park close, depending mm -hmm. on how the kids feel. If they're tired, we go back a little early. But I know for you, Joey, y'all like to take those afternoon naps. And we can't get the kids to lay down to save our lives because <laughs> they're so excited and so full of adrenaline there's no such thing as a nap for our daughters at all. Not at this stage, at least, unless they're sick. Okay. Right? Well, to kind of move on from this topic into my next um, kind of Disney hack or what we do pre-trip, after we pick the dates, which are now just kind of set in stone, I get a piece of paper, like a regular piece of paper and like a pencil, Trent's not sure what that is because he, he's all about technology. <laughs> he's got the yeah, pen. he's got a pen. <laughs> but I'll make columns on my paper, one column for every day. And at the top, I'll write like Magic Kingdom, November 19th, and so on and so on. And then under that, we pick our ADRs. And I do one ADR a day. And for us, it comes out to be with tip about eighty dollars. Okay, and for I four know, of you, wow. yeah, for yeah. four of us. But we're eating at like um, be our guest fifties prime time. Sci-fi. You know, Sci-fi. We're not going to Le Cilliers or anything like that. Sure. Yeah. You're not, and you're not doing the buffets like uh, Tusker House. Yeah, we're no. not. We. Yeah. I'm sorry, but Trent and I don't eat buffets. <laughs> we just don't dig them. Crystal, I mean, we love Crystal, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace breakfast. And that's about it. Yeah. So we're that's not about buffet bucks. people. Yeah. And so we pick one ADR a day and I write that up there and whether I want it for lunch or breakfast. And then we kind of wing it with the quick services. But um, just to go on with the money thing, because I feel like when people talk about their trips, they need to like, we all need to talk about, how much we're spending at these certain places so people can get a better mental picture of what they're going to spend. Because when we first started our trip, I started researching menus and sites with menus on it. Like all ears.net is my favorite site for menus with the prices. So I would know how much to plan, but our, we do a quick service a day, which is about $40. And then the ADR, which is about 80, and we bring our own breakfast. We always make sure for breakfast to have something with protein in it, some sort of peanut butter, something like that. We also, because that fuels your body, you stay fuller longer and have more energy. And we bring our own snacks, generally beef jerky or peanut butter with pretzels or something, something with that protein in it though, yeah. and good fats. Yeah. As you could probably notice, we're not huge foodies. And um, and it's not because that we don't want to. It's just when we're there at the parks, we're there to have a good time. And I mean, food's, food's important for all of us. I mean, that's, that's, that's obvious. But we <laughs> like to experience things like the shows and the attractions. Now, we're not like running around from every single attraction back no. and forth. We take our time. I mean, we're yeah. that slow walking family soaking it in. Yeah, so, I'm going to get into that in a second, yeah, but how this, we plan it. That's just to clarify about all the uh, the uh, non-reservations uh, there because yeah. we just don't do it. Because like, there's times where I get off a like certain rides and I don't feel like eating for a while. Cause I mean, I'm a little older. I mean, I'm 41. I'm not old, but my body's not like I am in my twenties. So I have to kind of 
take it easy. So if I'm not very hungry, I might order something from the kids menu and I'm not forced to having to waste credits if I'm on the food plan, you know, yeah. or the or the meal plan. So go ahead, Jenny. Also, another thing with the food, since we are, you know, we're not having lunch till 1230 or so and we have breakfast on the way to the park, then we might be hungry for a Disney park snack. Whereas if we eat a full breakfast and we eat a full lunch and we eat a full supper, we'll miss out on the Mickey pretzels and the frozen bananas. Mm -hmm. So, but we're just not huge into the food, but we do. Um, we look at all the restaurants, we watch YouTube videos on them. We read reviews, but again, our family is a little different and we enjoy doing stuff like that. For me, it's more of the experiences. I like 50s prime time because I like to play along. <clears throat> Excuse me. I like sci-fi dinner theater because I like to sit in the cars. I like to check out the ongoing loop of the movie. I like all those things. Those are excellent. And that's what I like is the experiences that you can get like that. Yeah. So one of my hacks when it comes to food, if you bring snacks or breakfast or whatever, make sure that it has protein. I'm not going to get into a nutrition lesson, but starting your morning with protein is really the best way to start it. But after we've picked the dates, we've picked what days we're doing what, and we've picked our dinings all in my columns, I'll like if we're going to have an ADR for lunch, I'll move it kind of down to the middle of the columns. We kind of start discussing um, fast passes because that's the next big thing. Oh, yeah. So the, here, here's a hack. Her favorite right here is a fast passes. Here's a hack <laughs> for fast passes. When I look at the map, I'm going to go with, um, let's say we're going to have supper at Be Our Guest. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about Magic Kingdom. We always do two days in Magic Kingdom. We do the first day in Magic Kingdom, and we do the last day in Magic Kingdom. No matter what the crowd calendar says, which sometimes drives me crazy because <laughs> I automatically want to go to the slowest park that day. But if we're going to be eating at Be Our Guest for supper, I'm going to look at the map, and I'm visually going to cut it in half. And I'm going to say... Day one, we're doing side A, and day two, we're doing side B, so that we don't have to stress out about what days, you know, getting all the rides in. When we plan the fast passes, I plan them for around 10, 11, and 12, or 10, 30, 11, 30, and 12, 30. Because if you do rope drop and get there at 9 o'clock in the morning and you're doing side A, you can go and do Pirates, Jungle Cruise, Tiki Room, Magic Carpets of Aladdin, and Big Thunder Mountain, usually before 10 or 10.30. I mm -hmm. have to say my favorite Disney hack is being that first family on Pirates. Love it. Yeah, we so did that I, once. If, yeah, and it's, it's, it's actually fun to actually take a picture with them because we actually did. We actually took a picture with the people who operate the boat, and it's very fun. But another thing that's kind of creepy but fun, Tiki Room early in the morning when it's just the family of four of us, it's a little weird, but it's truly incredible <laughs> experience. I'm telling you now, it's so funny. Yeah, when, yeah. How crazy. So, the four of you are the only ones in the room. Yeah, that's happened twice. <laughs> Last trip, another couple was in the room with us, but they got up and left because the birds were freaking their kids out. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I get a chuckle at that one part where he goes, goes, oh, look at all the people. And, like, it's just us. It's the four yeah. of us, you know? And, and, and then it's so funny, you know? But that's I great. enjoy that show ever since I was a little kid. It's just, it's always been a favorite. So anyway, so side note, we go left. Adventureland is where it's at. You don't go straight. You don't go right. You go left. Yeah. Well, on day we do side A, we go left. On day we do side B, we go right. Well, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> if, if you're planning your day out and you're doing it like this, it's 1230 or say, okay, we've done Big Thunder. We can do 1030 for Seven Dwarfs, 1130 for Haunted Mansion, and 1230 for Enchanted Tales with Belle. So then we'll have lunch, either an ADR, because I always 
try to get the ADRs um, close to like when we normally eat so our bodies aren't so thrown off. Uh, and then after, I don't plan anything after that until supper because we've already been able to hit up all of the main rides on side A. The rest of the afternoon, we can sit under a tree and take a nap if we want to. We can shop if we want <laughs> to. We can watch the parade. We can do whatever we want to, and it's not going to matter because we still have our second day to do side B. We don't yeah, have to rush and rush and rush and rush yeah, and rush. We're not rushed to yeah. see it all in one day. Do you have a favorite tree you like to nap under? <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple I like to sit under. <laughs> it's I, just I a nap or I'm not. I'll tell you my favorite place to rest is actually at Epcot under the breezeway between mouse gears and electric umbrella. There's like a pillar with... Um, Dred's looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, where is she going with yeah, this? Yeah, there's this pillar with a plug-in, and there's oh, yeah. been a couple of times where I'll just sit on the floor, I'll charge the electronics. One year, Trent in Brooklyn went and did something. Sophia sat with me. She fell asleep. I kind of dozed off while they did their thing, and then we came back. The, That's like my favorite place to chill out. This was before the days of the fuel rods. This yeah. was before the fuel rods came into fruition, so yeah. which we have now, but yeah. Those are a must actually for your trip to small tangent. So Fantastic. I do, I do have a favorite place to chill yep. out. I don't really have a favorite place at magic kingdom though. I, I wish magic kingdom had, um, in fantasy land, just a little more shade. Well, my favorite that's wide open is I love the garden there right by the castle. I love it there in those little grassy areas there. They're yeah, nice. Yeah. And also like getting ice cream at the ice cream parlor at the, at the corner next to there because we love getting the Mickey pants. And yeah. that's always a great uh, snack. And we bring the bowls home too because they make good serving dishes for parties. Yeah. yeah. I, I like the shade. I burn like a crawfish. So I need, <laughs> I need Same some here. shade. Yeah. yeah. So th that's kind of, I don't know if you call it a hack or a tip, but that's kind of how we plan out our days pre-trip um, wow. to make it where we get everything in. And I feel like I have this thing. down to a science. She does. <laughs> it's do. all journey. I just go along for the ride. You know what and I'm saying? She plans thing. all this stuff. If we're going to like um, say, I'm not going to say Animal Kingdom because now that there's Pandora, I feel like that needs a little more attention. Say we only, oh, I don't want to say Epcot because we always do at least a day and a half with Epcot. Say we're Epcot. going to Hollywood Studios. We're only going to stay at one day at Hollywood Studios. Yeah. You've got to plan that day out a little bit more, but I plan things out in hour increments. Say like, we get there, we're going to rope drop Tower of Terror. Um, I might do, so that's 9 o'clock, I might do a 10 o'clock fast pass for Toy Story Midway Mania. We might plan something at 11 and 12. I do it by the hour so that when we get done with Toy Story Midway Mania, we don't have to run to the next thing. We can take our time and enjoy that section before it's like, oh, hey, it's 1045. We have such and such at 11. Mm -hmm. So that's how I do like a full day so that we still have that time to just stroll around and enjoy it, take pictures, sit down and rest. Um, and I'll still plan in the afternoon two or three hours where there's nothing. We can rest or go back to the room or watch Muppets 3D a couple times. of times. Yeah. I love Muppets or, yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah. Well, just a quick thing is we – Always get our three fast passes before a trip. We all do that, right? We rarely get four or a fifth one because we're just so laid back that we yeah. just don't ever get to do it. You know? Well, and the way we plan everything, we plan it so that if something happens, it's not going to be a big deal. Um, we have time to do it later. Correct. Yeah. Well, if nothing else, you can always get a fast pass for like a fireworks show or something. You know, if they... If they have that now, I know they're doing away with that at Magic Kingdom, but some of the other places you can get it, you know, if it's possible in November, get that fourth fast pass for Rivers of Light if you happen to be yeah. at Animal Kingdom. That way you're going to at least get some better viewing and you're not going to have to line up for three hours before it, depending on 
how busy the park is. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a great, you know, it's, you know, you, you, and I know that you have your fast pass already on your calendar in September to get up in the morning and, and grab those at 60 days. So you make sure you have your preferred fast pass. What's your strategy on the day of, like, for example, in September, when you have to get up and get your fast passes, you have it all mapped out. Oh, do yeah. Use, oh, do, <laughs> do we the- have it mapped <laughs> out? Come on now. So this year, I did, I got all of the ADRs I wanted, but one. And instead of supper, they only had lunch available. And I feel like it's because we were working with the six people instead of the four. I feel like the way the tables are set up, it's easier for restaurants to fit four, eight, or four, eight, ten, kind of those, the four, and then the bigger groups. The six is kind of an odd number to put two tables together and things like that. So I didn't get the dinners. So the fast passes, I'm still going to get them three hour increments and everything. But I'll sit down. I've got my columns and I've got my um, dinner already or the ADRs already in their spots for lunch and then dinner and so on Thanksgiving day we're having Thanksgiving lunch at 50s prime time yeah, and since I, I like to do <laughs> ADR starting around 10 10 30 I'm going to plan that day, that morning of the park is going to be around 50s prime time. We're going to do probably Tower of Terror before our in-laws get to the park, but we'll probably fast pass that. We will probably fast pass Star Tours for that morning and then something else for that morning around 50s prime time. Toy Story or something, yeah. Yeah, so that we're not running all over the park, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. We like to kind of follow the park like it has an invisible sidewalk path, you know, one way. And that's kind of how we work it. So we're not running it back and forth. So that's how we plan when we're going to do our fast passes. But we found out last year, and this would have worked really well theoretically and I do feel like it's a Disney hack because there are now the Pandora fast passes there's two attractions you can only get fast passes to one or or the other thanks for that to your system Trent and I both have a Disney my Disney experience Experience. app he has his sign-in I have my sign-in my in-laws have their sign in and all three of them are linked. So the morning of the fast passes, Trent is going to have his list of fast passes that he's going to get. I'm going to have the day, I'm going to have the time period, and I'm going to have them written down in level of importance. I'm going to have my list, day, time, level, importance. Like he's going to go for one Pandora, I'm going to go for the other Pandora because we're going to do... We're going to do pan, um, Animal Kingdom one morning and then another afternoon so that we can do Pandora in the morning at night and then everything else. Um, he'll try to get a Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. I'll try to get Space Mountain. He'll try to get Test Track. I'm going to try and get Mission Space because we're going to Epcot twice. So we're going to have it worked out like that already I already know what days we're park hopping. We're already going to know, you know, what time period we're going to be in what park to be able to break it apart like that. And that really has to do with just me being um, a planner and liking to sit down and mark everything out. Yeah, so, she's, she's the planner for sure. Yeah, he'll have his list and I'll have my list. And the hard to get ones are going to be up at the top, and then everything else just will be. Right, and that's how it works. Just having those separate accounts linked, yeah. it makes it so much easier, and we can kind of tag team things a little bit. And since Trent and my mother in law are not really planners, um, it's funny whenever we go over to their our house and we're discussing Disney stuff, it's always me and my father in law. <laughs> and then Trent and Miss Merle just kind of sit there and li- and listen because as far as things like that go, 
it's me and my father-in-law deciding kind of where we're going to go and when and um, Mr. Cliff really decided where we were going to eat and things like that because it's probably going to be their last trip. Yeah, because they're a little older and they said they, they want to at least go one more time Yeah, this trip. But I think once they get there, they have a change of heart, I bet. <laughs> but as far as uh, Fast Passes go this year, I'm going to actually start probably in July working on my list because I want to take that and I want to take it to my father-in-law and discuss like, I feel like dinosaur, it's a ride that we want to go on, but it's probably going to be too rough for my mother-in-law because it, it's kind of a rough ride. So she would either have to sit in the middle and be cushioned by sandwich her me and Trent between us. Like, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. or it might just be where we don't think she's going to be able to handle it. And so that would be an, a, a fast pass that we pick for in the morning before they, they come. There. Because yeah. we wake up, Trink gets up every morning at 5.20 for work, which means I get up every morning at 5.30 when I actually finally hear them moving. They sleep in to like 8, 9 in the morning. So my father-in-law was like, don't plan anything for me and Merle until... At least 10, 1030. We're not going to be at the parks before 10. So, you know, whatever Trent and I want to ride that they physically won't be able to, we're going to try and take care of it before they come into the parks. Yeah, that's smart. I had a couple of thoughts I wanted to throw at you. And uh, again, if you've already thought of this, then just let me know. But the touring plans, I just found out that they have this feature. If you guys subscribe to touring plans where you, you tell them that you want to get a particular, say you try to get a particular ADR you can't get, you know, like be our guest for dinner, but it's not available. So you had to settle for lunch. You can for no cost have them keep pinging the system until one becomes available and it'll grab it for your party of six and then let you know, and you can cancel the lunch that you didn't want and be able to get the one that you want. That's just something to look into. The other one is that you didn't mention, or at least I didn't hear you mention, the 60-day plus 10 strategy that you can use for your fast passes, which is pretty great. I know you guys are going to get up in the morning and get your fast passes, but one thing that you um, have an advantage over most people who are not staying on property, and most people that are staying on property probably don't even know about this, is that you can get all your fast passes all at one time on that one, you know, that one day. So when you're going to get, you know, you're, you said your first day is is Magic Kingdom and your last day is Magic Kingdom. So whatever day happens to be Animal Kingdom is actually greater than 60 days. So if it's a third or fourth day, for example, you're actually getting it at 64 days out, which gives you that much greater opportunity to, to yeah. snap the coveted Pandora fast passes that you want to get. Oh, exactly. yeah. And as for touring plan goes, like, we keep looking into it and we keep saying, oh, we sub should subscribe to touring plans. But we are the odd people and we actually check our My Disney Experience app ourselves. Like, that's just something we do. Like, I occasionally, about once a week, I go on and see, you know, hey, is um, we didn't get sci-fi. That was the only restaurant I couldn't get, you know. Is sci-fi open yet? Or I always check be our guest. Like, I just like to do it myself. She's sure. kind of a hands-on. Yeah. And uh, just to the fact that, like, Trent likes everything electronically. He loves the My Disney Experience app for when we make our reservations and stuff. I bring in a paper itinerary to the parks with us because he's looking on his app. I've already pulled out my paper. I've looked at it and we're walking away and he's still on the phone. Cause it's in our park bag. Yeah. Yeah. I keep, uh, I do that and I keep it in my pocket in my cargo shorts. So yeah, I totally, I yeah. love that. I know touring plans works really, really well for a lot of people and it would probably work really, really well for us. Except I would probably second like question touring's plans choices for my day just because that's how I am. So I don't use the touring plans at touringplan.com, but there's about 10 other features on there that I find are so valuable that they they pay for it a hundred over. And that is uh, another one is I know you guys wanted joining rooms. They have a feature on there where they will go through the process of making sure that that's all secured 
And, yeah. and they even have, they have photographs from the balconies of every room. So if you wanted a particular view or if you wanted it closer to the lobby or closer to where the buses pick up, they have that as well. But th those are just a couple of the, the features. I'm just a big proponent of it because I've used it and had so many uh, great experiences. But I've, ne I've, I've tried to use the touring plan component and it drives me nuts because I know I can get through the park faster and I can see more stuff and I know that it's not going to take me as long <laughs> to do what it says. And so I just kind of push that aside and use all the other features. I don't use that. Yeah. I want to try it out just to even do a review on our podcast about it too, just to see if it was a bust for us or did it work, work really well? Yeah. See, in that case, it's a, it's a tax write off. And it's, and you know, if you go buy a copy of the unofficial guide, there's a c code in the back. I think you can get it for as low, low as eight or nine bucks, but even at full price at $15 for 12 months, it's, it's, you know, when you compare to the thousands of dollars you're spending on your trip, it's pretty much a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I know we've been talking a while. I had just a few more things I had wanted to say. Sure. Um, I don't know how long your shows usually go, so... <laughs> They're usually um, less than an hour, but this is, you guys are special, so we'll just keep going until you're all done. All right. Well, I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> um, well, when Trent told me the topic, for so, my mind was like, oh, he, you know, how we kind of set up the beginning of our trip, because we've talked about our trip a lot on our own personal podcast, but I don't think we've really went through how we plan it. Um, some things we have in our park bags, because I see people talk about park bags all the time. One thing, whatever park bag you get, for us, it must have some sort of holder on the outside of the bag for water bottles. Mm. Some sort of cargo holder or something for water bottles. We always have our rain jackets or ponchos. We always have sunscreen. Now, sunscreen is only good on your body for like 80 minutes to 90 minutes. So you need, you have to remember to reapply it. I was just recently told by this guy who is a competitive fisherman. He uses the bullfrog brand of sunscreen. He said every time he's used it in competitions, he's never burned, but you've got to reapply it every hour or hour and a half, whatever it is. And he said he puts an alarm on his phone to go off that mm -hmm. says sunscreen to remind him to apply it. So that's, that's the brand we're going to try for the beach. And if it works well for us, if we remember to put it on, which I'm sure we will, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> that's the brand we're going to bring for Disney. Right. We always have our snacks. We always have our battery charger, like the rechargeable ones, and we always have a phone cord just in case. Yeah. I always have a folder with pockets that we put maps in, we buy postcards, any of the things that we don't want to get bent. Uh, if you do Enchanted Tales with Belle, you get... Uh, bookmark, yep, bookmark. Um, we, all of the things we don't want to bend, we put in there. And then we always have our water bottle. Which is very important to stay hydrated because we have the Brita. Is it the Brita brand? Yeah. Last yeah. time I bought the Brita brand, it has the filters in it. Yeah. That's it, great. It's built in the stem. So when yeah. you go up to those water fountains, I know that probably sounds nasty, but you, but you put that water in there and it filters out all that bad stuff yeah. and it just keeps you <laughs> hydrated because now, now yeah. during our time, it's not very hot during November, but I can only imagine what it is June, July, August. Well, you know? yeah. We bought the Brita water bottles at Walmart, I think, for like thirteen ninety eight a piece. We've always brought two, and but we've always kind of just used one. So I think next time we're just going to – well, no, now we'll have your parents. We'll probably still right. bring two. But the filters are good for like three months in the water bottle and indefinitely until you use them. Correct. I'm not, it's a long expiration date. So it's not like – I mean, you might go, oh, 14 bucks for a water bottle. I already have water bottles. Well, the filter comes with it, so you're not paying extra for that. And think about, I know um, counter service restaurants you can get, or quick service you can get free water. But think of how long it takes to go and stand in line just for a free cup of water when right. you could just go to the water fountain 
Florida water to us tastes a little funny. So that Brita filter just helps it taste like normal bottled water. Yeah. Yeah. Flor Florida water tastes funny to people in Florida too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, with your park bag, when you're going up to security, make sure you pre-zip every single pocket in advance. And if you've got ponchos or rain jackets or uh, animal comes with us, our little stuffed animals or park mascot, we always take kind of the bigger stuff out so it's easier for them to look into. Correct. So if you do that, every it saves a lot of time. Everybody behind you, you will be their hero for the day. That's right. And it, it makes things a lot snappier in line. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my here's my last thing. Before your trip, you need to mentally prepare yourself for rain, for cranky kids or cranky adults, for blisters, for sunburn, for having to change your plans some to mentally prepare yourself to get hit in the ankles a couple of times by strollers. <laughs> I feel like we plan this trip and we go, oh, this is going to be perfect. And a lot of people get there and it's not exactly what they plan and they leave feeling disappointed. But I feel like if you're mentally prepared for something to go wrong, you're not going to be disappointed because you were like, yeah, I knew it was going to rain a couple times or yeah, I figured I was going to get hit a couple times. I yeah. did this before last year's trip. And when we had to take Brooklyn to the emergency room in an ambulance on that Saturday, <laughs> it, it was a big deal, but mentally it was like, okay, I, I'm prepared for something to have, have happened, and this is what's going to happen. I mean, she, was, she had a small concussion. She was totally fine. The next day, we went to the park. She just had to take it easy. But I didn't feel disappointed. I don't think Trent felt disappointed. No. I don't think the kids could – well, Sophia didn't. She was fine. But I don't <laughs> think the kids, you know, really can prepare themselves for disappointment anyway. I, yeah. And I don't think Brooklyn was disappointed either because being in the wheelchair when we went to different places. <laughs> she enjoyed that. The cast yeah. members took extra time to talk to her and check on her and, and things like that. So that kind of made up for it. But I was mentally prepared to have something happen, not on that range, but just something to happen. And when something did happen, it was like, yeah, I was prepared for that. You know, it, it's fine. I knew my trip wouldn't be perfect. Right. And on top of that, with her and the experience of going to the hospital, that's hard to plan for. It was just a sudden thing. And for us, it was something that we, I think we handled pretty well. I mean, you know. I, look, if there is an emergency, let me, just a little tangent on what I did wrong and what I wish I had known. Brooklyn had gotten a really, really high fever and Trent and Sophia had left. And after a little while, she said she wanted to get in the shower to cool off a little bit. So she got in the bathtub at first and then she stood up to take the shower and she was under the faucet and she got dizzy and passed out and fell and hit her head, mm. um, which I didn't realize she hit her head at first. I thought she just passed out. So I got her out of the shower and not wanting to be the most adultiest adult there, I called my mom and was like, this just happened. What do I do? And her not wanting to be the most adultiest adult said, you need to call this other person who is a nurse and teaches nursing school. And, you know, so I called that person and she said, you need to go to the emergency room. Yeah. So that's what we did. I got her dressed. I called the front lobby and they said, if you can get her up here, we can get a car to take you to like an after hours clinic because it was a Saturday. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, um, I'm by myself. Trent's at the park. I can't really get him because he's on the bus and everything. So I'm getting Brooklyn, who's not really awake, to the, we're in the aerial suites, 
all the way 100 million miles away from the front. So we are walking, <laughs> literally taking five steps, and she's sitting down and falling back Aww. asleep. And then five more steps and sitting down, falling back asleep. And we do this until we're about halfway there. And I couldn't get her to wake up again. And a cast member found us. And she said, don't take another step. I've got this. She called. Um, she said, if you leave any of the parks or resorts in an ambulance, Disney actually pays for the ambulance ride. Wow. Wow. And if I had known that or had even, like, thought, which I, I wouldn't have called 911 because, I, I don't know, I'm just not the person who would call 911. But if I had at first thought, I need to get a cast member, I would have saved Brooklyn 20 minutes because this cast member took over. We got her in a cart. We got her, um, we were kind of fanning her off. The paramedic showed up like two minutes later. The security guard, the, the main security guy showed up. The lifeguard manager had showed up and we passed the pool. If I had known he was at the pool, I could have gotten him to help. Um, so, and by that point, it was 104. We got to the emergency room. They got the fever down. She had a concussion. She's fine. <laughs> but if I had known that... Mm -hmm. Any cast, just get any cast member to help me. If I had asked any of them, even housekeeping would have went a lot easier um, than it had went. And if I had known about the ambulances, then it would have been like, hey, cast member, I need an ambulance. Um, I didn't realize she had hit her head until the paramedic was there and actually felt a knot on her head. Oh, wow. But that's, that's, a tip if you really feel like it's an emergency get a cast member to get you an ambulance and we were in the at, in the emergency room and the paramedic was so kind um he said it's going to be at least a 20 minute wait for the room is what they're telling me and he goes i don't think she needs to wait 20 minutes so he called in advance and had everything set up so we literally just went right into a room so that's that's one kind of side tangent. If I I wish I had known, you know, fine or even had called the the front desk and been like, "Hey, I need yeah. security down here to help me or I need the pool um the main lifeguard to come and help me." Any of those people would have been more helpful than me on my own or had been more helpful than me getting down to the lobby. Cause they don't, they don't know if you just say, Hey, my daughter fell. Well, okay. Get her up here. We'll take her somewhere. So but a in good closing thing to know. of the story, <laughs> the trip was still magical. We still had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. And we look back at some of the photos and kind of laugh, like look at Brooklyn. She's in the chair. You know, that was kind of our fun thing, kind of making her feel a little better that it wasn't bringing our trip down because it kind of made it actually yeah. kind of more magical because she had the spotlight on her a little bit in that way, but she still had a great time because yeah. the first thing that this made me so proud was when she got back to the resort and I asked her, what do you want to do Brooklyn? And she says, I want to go see the carousel of progress. And Aww. I was just like, yes, it's my favorite. I love yeah. that. So we took a special trip. We got on the bus and we rode all of the magic kick and we did it, you know. And then when it was done, we literally got back on the bus and went back <laughs> to the room because she was just really, really tired. It was very crowded but, that night, too. Uh, yeah. But like I said, before the trip, plan for mentally plan for something to not go right for a kid to be super tired or maybe sunburn or, you know, yeah. whatever. And you're, you're not going to feel disappointed in the trip. I love that. I got so much out of that. So when I started doing this podcast, one of the first things that obviously occurred to me was that, you know, this is based on life hacks and we're all familiar with little life hacks, things that you can do in your everyday life. And one of the things that I wanted to steer away from was having a show that just talked about how ways to save money and ways to save time. I really wanted to talk about those ways to hack the magic and setting a mental precedent before you even go that says, it's going to rain. 
I'm going to get run over by strollers. Uh, you know, I'm going <laughs> to, somebody's going to get sunburned somewhere. I'm somebody's going to get a, bl a blister and, you know, in being mentally prepared to say, okay, we're going to deal with it when the bad things come. And you guys, you know, this is a story where, I mean, the emergencies happen. And, and, you know, we, in 2014, my nephew got sick and had a fever, but, you know, he, we just took it easy for a day and then he was fine. It really didn't even, it, you know, damage our uh, plan because it, it was an off day. It was a, a pool day that he, you know, laid low. And so by the next day, he was back at his usual self when we were back in the parks. But, you know, it's so important to set the mental, you know, cruise control to say, okay, look, I know things are not going to go perfect. This isn't my wedding day. It doesn't have to be the best thing ever. I know that if my kid gets sick or gets injured and we have to miss a day that we plan to go to the parks or a hurricane blows through or something, you know, it, it's so great that you do that. And in my mind, that is one of the best magic hacks that you can have because you can, like you said, so many people spend, they spend all this money. They spend, they drop six and eight grand and they go there and, <laughs> they, a, and a blister ruins their whole trip. Yeah. 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 And that's another thing when you're planning, like I always have a little first aid kit with Neosporin and Band-Aids and Ibuprofen, Aleve, Tylenol prescriptions, <laughs> blister ease. We it's always amazing. Bring, I'm telling you. <laughs> and if it's in this itty bitty case, like, yeah, I just first aid's been thing, and we always bring two pairs of shoes. This is another hack. Always bring two pairs of shoes because you don't want to walk your 50, 60, whatever miles you're going to be walking during the week in the same pair of shoes. Totally. By the end of the week, you're going to hate the shoes, your feet are going to hurt. But if you have shoes that you can alternate, we bring tennis shoes, and um, the girls bring their tennis shoes and Crocs. I bring my Converse and Crocs, and Trent brings Converse and Crocs. Yep. Um, and this year, we'll probably bring our tennis shoes and Crocs. But that's that's what we switch out so that our feet get a break and our shoes get a break. And we just find it works out better if everybody has two pairs of shoes. That is so smart. Well, guys, I know I could probably talk to you all night long. <laughs> I can I'm do the sure same can, here. <laughs> you can come up with more things, but I, I think this has been a lot. And, you know, as you guys go in November and you think of other things that maybe you hadn't thought of yet, well, why don't you come back on and we can talk about those things then. I just think it, it's such a valuable thing to know to ask a cast member. I think that that's something that maybe you guys, you know, shout it from the rooftops, you know, put it on social media, tell it on your show. I'm going to make sure that that gets highlighted when I put out the show notes for this, because I think that's so critical that people need to know if you're in an emergency, the first thing you need to do is just get a cast member because they want to help you. And, yeah. and they, the, the cast members in the lobby were great on the phone and everything, but they weren't actually physically there to see what was going on. Whereas if I had walked outside to the balcony and had yelled at the guy spraying off the sidewalks or someone <laughs> right. to come up, it would have been so much quicker and easier because that cast member would have physically been there with me. Yeah. Yeah. With the same energy you used to call your mom, you could have called the front desk, but knowing that information is so <laughs> <Yeah>. vital <laughs> and always have two pairs of shoes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I so appreciate you guys doing this, coming on. I knew th I knew you guys were going to have some good <laughs> stuff. And you know what? This has been the easiest episode I've ever recorded because awesome. well, you guys are you're seasoned, right? You've been doing this a year and a half. You guys talk through your whole show. You do your live show on Facebook yep. every week. So you're used to talking. I didn't have to do a whole, I mean, I've done 10% of what I usually do. I didn't have to pull a lot from you. You guys were doing all the work and I really appreciate it. Why don't you take a few moments and tell everyone how they can find you, how they can connect with you. I know you guys are active on uh, Facebook so they can, uh, you know, send you a friend request or, or get into your community and talk this stuff up with you wherever you're at. Okay. You can find us first and foremost at our website at the Disney DNA podcast.com. And on there you will find all the ways that you can find us from Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And just, just actually in in those, just search Disney DNA Podcast, and you can listen to our podcast several ways. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play. You can find us in Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and TuneIn. And I'm working on getting us ready in YouTube just for audio. It's just a, another outlet, and we also do our weekly Facebook Live 
show, and we usually do those on Sunday nights around what about seven o'clock? We usually eight do o'clock? them around seven or eight, but seven, eight we've o'clock? been talking about maybe starting to do them on one of the weeknights. Yeah. But if you like our Facebook page, then whenever we do our show, we actually put a event reminder out a couple of hours before we do it. So if you want to watch it that night, it will pop up that we're going to be doing it at whatever time. And whenever we switch to, we can't officially switch until I find out what day I'm taking my notary classes on. And then after that, we're going to be doing it a weeknight. Yeah. And the whole purpose of that is so we can connect with the listeners because we appreciate those who support the podcast. So check us out. (laughs) Yeah. Check them out. Tell them I sent you. And uh, I, I just really, I can't say enough how much I appreciate you guys. You have become friends and I am glad to call you part of my Disney family and I'm super excited about your trip in November. I'll be watching all of the things that you're posting on your Facebook page and all the things you talk about on your podcast leading up to it and while you're there. And if there's anything I can ever do for you guys, let me know. I'm going to go ahead and, and end this here and say thank you so much for listening to my conversation with the Calouettes about their trip and how they planned it to go to Walt Disney World in November. If you have some really unique family Disney travel hacks that you want to share, please let me know. You can find me all over the internet at The Disney Hack. And I just look forward to talking to, talking to you then. But until then, make sure to pack two pairs of shoes. Good night, That's everybody. Right. Bye-bye. You know, I don't know if you know this, but the Disney hack was a double entendre. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like to think I know a lot, but the reality is uh, I can learn from everyone, and especially the podcasting community I've learned so much from. And so you guys are a fountain of knowledge that I want to, you know, be able to pick your brains and learn some stuff from. And uh, it's just it's just great to be able to do this. Plus, in the you know, you, you let me go, come on your show and promote mine, so now you get to come on mine and promote yours. And that's just yeah. how it works.